أَأَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابًا مُتَشَابِهًا كِتَابًا مُتَشَابِهًا مَثَانِيَةً قَشَعِرُ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series, Understanding the Qur'an. I am your host, Yasir Qadhi. We were still talking about the definition of the Qur'an. What exactly is the Qur'an? How do we define it? And we mentioned that the definition of the Qur'an is that the Qur'an is the Arabic speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this, spe- this phrase excludes the speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in other languages that he revealed to other prophets. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent many, many prophets. In fact, in one hadith we learn that he has sent 124,000 prophets and over 310 messengers. So each of these prophets and messengers gets revelation from Allah. And the revelation that the prophets are given is given in the tongues that they speak and their people speak. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ Every single prophet that we sent was sent speaking the language of his people. So the books that came down from Allah came down in the languages of the people to whom uh, these prophets were sent. So we have books that were revealed in Hebrew, in Aramaic, in Syriac, in many other languages that we don't even know what they are called anymore. The Qur'an is not those books. The Qur'an is the book given in Arabic to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we said in wording and meaning. This is part of the definition. And this is because some people presumed that the Qur'an came down in meaning from Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the one who originated the wording. And this is obviously not true because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his job was to convey the message and not to invent the message. Allah says, إِنَّ مَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ your job is to convey. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you were to invent something else that we didn't say, if you were to distort the message, then you have failed in your job as a messenger. We also said that part of the definition includes that the Qur'an is that which has been preserved in the Mus'haf. Now, the Qur'an has been preserved in the Mus'haf. By the Mus'haf we mean a written copy of the Qur'an. But not just any copy. We mean especially the copies commissioned by the Caliph Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, and we will talk about those copies in a future episode. The Caliph Uthman, the third Khalifa of Islam, he commissioned a number of Quranic manuscripts to be written and distributed in the Muslim world and the Sahaba unanimously agreed upon those particular recensions and preservation of the Quran. So whatever is found in that copy of the Quran, we consider it to be a Quran, uh, a part of the Quran. And if we find historical references to other verses that were maybe recited for a temporary period of time, we do not consider those references to be a part of the Quran. This is because another part of the definition also states, and that which has been narrated to us by numerous people. In Arabic we call it mutawatir. Mutawatir means narrated by numerous people in every single level of the chain. So there were thousands of Sahaba and hundreds of thousands of those beneath them and hundreds and thousands of those beneath them until in our times we have millions and millions of people all of them reciting the exact same words, the exact same letters, the exact same harakas. All of this is exactly the same and this is what we mean by mutawatir. And the last part of the definition is that it is a challenge to mankind to produce something similar to the Qur'an. So the Qur'an is a miracle. It is a challenge to mankind to produce something similar to it. So this gives us a description of this book. And to reiterate the entire uh, definition, the Qur'an is the Arabic speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in wording and meaning, and which has been preserved in the mushafs and has been narrated to us in mutawatir narrations, and is a challenge to mankind to produce something similar to it. Now, there is a concept that maybe some of you have read about in history books, and that is the concept of the controversy 
over the created or uncreated speech of Allah. And this is a very long and detailed topic, but to summarize it very briefly, it goes as follows. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know this because Allah Himself says so. He calls the Qur'an Kalamullah in the Qur'an itself. For example, in Surah Tawbah, Allah says, حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ until he hears the kalam of Allah, meaning until he, the person you're talking to, hears the Qur'an. So the Qur'an calls itself kalamullah. And the Prophet ﷺ called the Qur'an kalamullah. So kalamullah means the speech of Allah. Now, the early Muslims, they understood this speech of Allah as being like all of Allah's other attributes, such as Allah's knowledge, and Allah's power, and Allah's wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is eternal, and all of his attributes are eternal. Allah's knowledge was not created. A'udhu billah, one time he was ignorant, then he became uh, knowledgeable. A'udhu billah from even saying that. Allah Azza wa was always knowledgeable. Allah Azza wa always has life. Allah Azza wa always has power. Similarly, the speech of Allah is also an eternal attribute of Allah. And if it is eternal, this means that it must be uncreated. And this was the standard belief without too much thinking deep into it, without philosophizing, without pondering over how does Allah exist. This is beyond our comprehension. We accept what Allah says and we affirm that Allah and all of His attributes are uncreated. Unfortunately, around the 3rd century of the Hijrah, foreign influences began to come into the Muslim Ummah. And especially Greek philosophical texts were translated. And this occurred during the early Abbasid period, and especially during the time of the Caliph Al-Ma'mun. Al-Ma'mun was a Caliph who instituted a translation committee, whose only job was to sit day and night and translate the works of the Greek philosophers and the works of the Greek scientists into Arabic. Now this translation movement, it sparked a lot of good, and from it, Muslims learned a lot about physics and astronomy, about biology and medicine, and that was very good. And so the Muslims became very powerful in those sciences. But unfortunately, this translation movement also had a negative side to it. And that negative side was that philosophical influences began to encroach upon the pure minds of the Muslim Ummah. And so they began thinking about the Qur'an and Sunnah in philosophical terms. And so they began asking questions that the mind cannot comprehend. What does it mean that the speech of Allah is uncreated? How can the speech be uncreated? How can this exist? How can Allah do that? And they began questioning beyond the comprehensions of the mind. And this led them to the formulation that the Qur'an cannot be uncreated, it must be created. And this became a controversy specifically during the Caliphate of Al-Ma'mun, around 230 Hijrah. And Al-Ma'mun made it the official state creed that the Qur'an is created and everybody must believe this. And this is not the belief of Orthodox Muslims. This is the belief of the philosophical groups. So he said all Muslims must believe that the Qur'an is created or else they will be jailed or even imprisoned or even executed. And everybody became scared of this decree except for one brave Imam by the name of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that famous scholar of hadith, and that famous scholar of legal law and text, and that famous theologian. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal stood up and opposed single-handedly the entire political forces of his time. And he was jailed, and he was imprisoned, and he was tortured, and he was almost executed. But he refused to give up this doctrine that the Qur'an is uncreated. He refused to give it up, and he fought them intellectually. He didn't have the means to fight them with power, because he was one and they were a state. And because he fought them, all the people in the Ummah listened to Imam Ahmad and they rejected what the politicians said about the religion. The, the, the masses always look up to the scholars for their religion and then don't look up to politicians for their religion. So they rejected what Al-Ma'mun said and they accepted what Imam Ahmad said and to this day the Orthodox creed has been that the Qur'an is the uncreated speech of Allah. Now what is the big deal somebody will say? So what if somebody says the Qur'an is created or uncreated, what difference does it make? And the response is, it makes a lot of difference. And the one who has asked the question really and truly has verbalized something that he does not understand the significance of. To say that the Qur'an is created implies that it is a human product. It implies that the Qur'an is not divine. 
it implies that it's not that important to follow. It implies that there are faults in it. Everything that is created has a finite time. It is not perfect. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. To claim that the Quran is uncreated is to claim that we may change it as we please. We may pick and we may choose what we may want to do. And this was the goal of the Caliph. He wanted to supersede the laws of Islam. He wanted to go do away with those laws he didn't like. But how is he going to do it when the Muslims believe in the Quran? So he did it through a theological point, or we can say he tried to do it through a theological point. He tried to say the Quran is created, step one. Step two, it is imperfect. Step three, we have to pick and choose what we want to want. If Imam Ahmad had allowed him, he would have gotten to step three. But Imam Ahmad understood the repercussions for claiming that the Quran is created, hence he stopped it right at its roots. And he said, the Quran is uncreated from Allah. It in and of itself is divine. The Quran is divine. This doesn't of course uh, negate the fact that certain aspects are our products, such as the paper upon which the Quran is written, and the ink that is used to write it, and the printing process, etc. But there is an element of the Quran that is divine. So when we recite the Quran, there is no doubt that the air that we expel from our lungs is created. But what is recited is uncreated. When a person writes the Quran, there is no doubt that his writing is created, but what is written is uncreated. When the Quran is printed in the mushafs, there is no doubt that the paper is created, but what is printed on it is uncreated. And so we have to be a little bit careful here when we say that uh, the Quran is the speech of Allah, we have to understand the speech of Allah is an attribute of Allah. And the attributes of Allah are eternal and uncreated. Now how we preserve them and how we relate them to our world, there is going to be an element there that is created and that, and that is the paper and the pen and the hand and the lungs that we use. But there is also an element that is uncreated. Therefore, the Quran being the attribute of Allah contains an element of divinity in it and that is because all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are a part of Allah and all of uh, the attributes of Allah are uncreated. So to summarize today's episode, we said that the Quran, the definition of the Quran is that it is the Arabic speech of Allah that has been preserved in wording and meaning, has been revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has been narrated by numerous people in every single chain and it is a miracle for others to produce something similar to it. Insha'Allah ta'ala, in our next episode, we will continue talking about other aspects of the sciences of the Qur'an. I hope to see you then. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allahu nazzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban mutashabiha kitaban mutashabiha مثانية تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله